I'm back. This is Kimberly Wright, KimberlyWright.com. And somebody mentioned, you know, did you make some videos on some of the other conditions that you have? Because I did some on Addison's. Well, my other really big one, well, I've also got asthma and hypoglycemia and scoliosis and a cyst on my brain and EDS. And lately I found out that I've got Chiari malformation, which means my brain's kind of falling out of my head. But today we will focus on EDS. We're sitting here enjoying the wind and the cool weather on the outskirts of Hurricane Irma. Um, and as I'm sitting here, I can stop and I can think of all the places on my body that hurt. The main symptom for EDS is chronic pain. And when I did finally find it, one of the things that I read said, you know, once you turn 40, you can expect to be in chronic pain for the rest of your life. Well, I'm 42, and so far they've proven to be right, which is not very exciting, but we're working on that. EDS is called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and what it means is that the ligaments in your body don't have enough of the protein collagen in them, and so they are floppy. So it's kind of like your ligaments are supposed to be like really good rubber bands that they can stretch and come back and stretch and come back, and they hold your bones together. And we think of them as just like in joints, but they're actually like all over your body in your um, fascias, I think is what they call it. It's covering around your organs. It's basically everything that's holding you together. Well, when you have EDS, it doesn't work that way. It's more like taffy. And sometimes it feels like taffy after you chewed it for a little while. And so some people say that really you're kind of falling apart. And basically, over the years, it feels like, for me, it's my left side that's the worst. It feels like half of my body has decided to, like, wander off by itself. And so it's always feeling like it's just... I tell people it feels like if you ever had a Barbie when you were a kid, you could, like, pop off their arms and pop them back on. And it feels like somebody popped my shoulder back on, but they didn't quite get it right. And so it's always just kind of, like, there. It's, it's hard to explain what it feels like. A lot of it's nerve pain. And so you've got the burning or the shooting or the numbness or the tingling. I get a lot of that. Um, or sometimes it even feels like, <laughs> like what I assume, you know, if somebody has an amputation and they call it um, phantom pain because your leg's not really there but you feel it. It's like several inches around the area just hurts or like it's numb or it's just like this aura glow of yuckiness. <laughs> So it's not very technical, but that's kind of the way it is. Um, I take pain medication regularly, and then I also have this other pain medication that I take when I need it, and it still doesn't actually deal with it. So at any given point, you could ask me, and I could stop and think about it, and I could tell you maybe, you know, anywhere from 1 to 2 to 15 places that just don't really feel very good at the moment. So what does that mean for life? Well. Again, with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, as with just about everything else, it depends. Some people can have it. They call it joint hypermobility is the more common form. And a lot of your really good gymnasts or your really good ballet dancers have this, and that's what makes them so flexible. Um, I feel sorry for them when they turn 40 <laughs> because it's going to be a real shock. But um, some people can have it their whole entire lives, and they don't have any bad symptoms from it. They don't have any um, pain. They just, they're just floppy and flexible, and that's nice. And then it goes all the way to people who are completely disabled, wheelchair-bound, um, et cetera. There are eight different kinds of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, everywhere from the joint hypermobility version to the kind that affects your heart and you are not going to have a very long life expectancy, or the different kinds that um, affect other things. It's, it's just a long, complicated process, but probably the most common would be the hypermobile one, which is what I have. It is not something you can test genetically. The other ones are a genetic. You can do a test and find out that's what you have. But what we do is called the Brighton score, and it includes things like, you know, can you push your fingers back farther than 90 degrees? Can you use your thumb and come down and touch your arm? Um, certain other things like, you know, are you bendy and floppy in certain places? Um, when I was a kid, this actually, when I finally found out about this, it was like, Finally, I have an explanation for what has happened to me since I was a tiny little girl. I used to get really bad headaches. I had stomach problems. Um, I would stop breathing and turn blue. I remember waking up crying with growing pains. My ribs hurt and all these different things that, you know, we went to the doctors and stuff, but they didn't know. You know, you couldn't put it all together. It was all these weird random things. And then throughout my life, it got worse. Like growing up in school, I couldn't play sports. 
Um, running a mile was awful. I'd run a few steps and I'd twist my ankle. I thought I was just a real weenie, <laughs> and if I could just get in shape, I'd be fine. When I got to college, I chose the two PE classes that you didn't have to run a mile for. You know, there were all these things that I adapted to that I didn't even realize were basically living with chronic illness, and I didn't know it. Um, but, like, one of the things is that I could do this. When I was a kid, this was my claim to fame. It would gross everybody out. And I have asked doctors over the years, you know, why can I do this? This is really weird. And they all kind of looked at me like, you're a freak. I don't know. <laughs> um, so they talk about, you know, we can do party tricks and we can do weird things. And it's yay for us, you know. But along the way, you know, over the years, things just got worse and worse and worse. And it does end up affecting your whole body, which probably explains the reason I ended up with hypoglycemia and Addison's disease and all these other things because if your body can't hold together, your endocrine system can't hold together, you're going to have endocrine system problems. If your neurological system can't hold together, your brain's going to fall out of your skull and you may have to have surgery to get that shoved back up where it should be. So basically, there are all kinds of things. <laughs> my daughter's sitting here this, she's cracking up. Um, Fortunately, my kids have a wonderful sense of humor, and we're not totally freaking out about the whole brain thing. It's okay. God is in control of my head, along with everything else. Um, so I'm actually going to see a neurosurgeon a week from tomorrow, a specialized neurosurgeon, to see about what's going on in my head. And, you know, that'll be interesting. But one really good thing was in finding out about this Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, finding out about the Chiari malformation and the other things going on, it was so good to finally have something that says, yes, all these things you went through all these years are legitimate. You didn't make them up. You weren't trying to get attention. You know, this wasn't something that you just... I often wonder when people talk about, you know, making up health problems, like, if we were going to make up a reality for ourselves, I mean, wouldn't we make up something that was, like, positive? Who really wants to say, ooh, I want to get some attention, so I'm going to pretend that I'm sick and miserable and I can't go to things that I'd really like to go to? So, you know, I think for most of us, it's not in our heads, but we really worry that it is. Um, so that's one thing that you could really do to help people who have chronic illness, especially before they get diagnosed, is to just every once in a while say, you know, I believe you, um, or just say that has to be really hard what you're going through, and it's got to be hard because I bet people don't really understand, or, you know, just something like that to let them know that there's somebody out there who doesn't think we're faking it or making this up and you know maybe we'll have another video about that but for now that's ehlers danlos syndrome so now you know and i could spend about two hours talking about it but i won't because you don't want to listen to that for now i'm going to get off of this hard wooden thing because sitting here is not really pleasant oh and that would be one more thing about ehlers danlos with the pain um, I have to be extremely careful how I sit, I have to be careful how I sleep, which is in another video. I have to be careful, you know, standing too long is bad. Um, I have to be careful where I put my arm right now. Even when I drive, it's like I've got braces for my knees and I've got the thing to sit on for my hip and I've got a pillow for under my arm. I thought, you know, if I get direct, it's going to be like, what is wrong with this girl? She shouldn't even be driving. <laughs> but it's just, you need to learn to live with what you've got. And this is the body that I'm in for now. So we're going to make the best of it and we do what we need to do. But if I'm ever standing around talking to you and I'm kind of squinting at you or I'm fidgeting a lot in church, um, it's usually just because things don't feel real good and, you know, you're trying to make the best of it so you can keep functioning, you know, and hang out with people and be in the world where you are and, you know, not be all like wah, wah, because it hurts all the time or whatever. It doesn't hurt all the time, so that's a good thing. But that's Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and now you know. You can turn it off now. <laughs>